I think one of the things we're um, moving towards now is no post-processing of the image through the um, uh, the image signal processor. So, um, like for, for what happens for cameras is that well, almost all cameras is they um, th there's a lot of post-processing done in order to make pictures look pretty. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we don't care about pictures looking pretty. Um, we, we we just want the data. We, we, so we're we're moving to just raw, raw photon counts. So the system will, like the image that 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 the computer sees is actually much more than what you'd see if you represented it on a camera. It's got much more data, uh, and even in very low light conditions, you can see that there's a small photon count difference between, you know, this spot here and that spot there, which means that. So it, it can see in the dark incredibly well um, because it can detect these tiny differences in photon counts. That's like, mu like much better than you'd possibly imagine. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Happy Wednesday to all of you. And a quick shout out to my newest patron, Bruce L. I greatly appreciate your support. So yesterday we had the Lex and Elon conversation. I'm assuming most of you have seen it by now. If you haven't, I would highly encourage you to watch it. If you don't have two and a half hours, I would watch from about the one hour mark to about 145. That's where they talk about Tesla, FSD, autopilot, neural nets, all of that good stuff. But the only thing I wanna say here is it's discussions like this that really remind me and give me extra conviction, not as if I need it, but Elon and Tesla are just so different. The way that Elon thinks, the first principles, and the culture that he has set up at Tesla over the last decade, and the agile manufacturing system, where when I think about Elon and Tesla and how they think and how they operate and how fast they move, and compare it to legacy automakers who, by the way, I want some of them to succeed. You know, I want these other EVs, but I just see the challenges for them competing with Tesla, and it's like, they're not even competing with Tesla. They're playing a completely different game. And you think about the leaders like Mary Barra, and she's not really like an engineer on the level like Elon. And from the top down, that's how the culture is formed. And look, I'm not trying to say there aren't smart, highly talented people at these other companies. However, I really just think Elon is clearly a different breed. And then Tesla having hired all of the very best talent and attracted the best talent that wants to be with somebody like Elon, that stuff matters and it plays out over years and years. And the last thing I'll say here, the most interesting thing to me was when Elon was talking about photons and how they are moving to processing photons, meaning that at night, Tesla vision essentially can see incredibly well, much better than you would think. And I know that a lot of people complain about, well, how is the FSD system going to work in the snow and the fog? Well, when you go from processing images to processing actual photons and reducing the jitter and the latency, meaning the time from the photons hitting the sensor to the time when the car actually reacts to that input. And it just gave me a new appreciation for what this system is going to be capable of even in non-ideal situations. Because if you close your eyes and you think from a photon stand point and a light emitting standpoint, whether you go into a dark room and then you go into a light room, you can sense the difference even with your eyes closed. So Elon said level four, maybe next year, time will tell, but I don't want to ruin anything for you guys if you haven't seen the interview yet, but it's linked below. Go check it out if you have the time. Moving on, in case you have not seen it yet, Tesla uploaded a new form four and yes, Elon's 10B51 plan is done. This user shared a new screenshot of a new feature in the Tesla app titled Add Driver and Drive Tesla Canada provided some new details. So when you click on that Add Driver button, you can send an invitation to the contacts in your phone via email, text, or any other option through your mobile phone. All the recipient has to do is click the link in the message and access is granted immediately if you already have the app installed and an account set up. If you already have a Tesla, you can swipe between cars to access them. And they did confirm this is live on iPhone and Android. And yes, reportedly access can be easily revoked at any time through the app. Tesla added a new men's quilted bomber jacket to the Tesla shop for $245. 
once again, very understated. A quick update on Giga New York that many Tesla fans forget even exists. Well, it is on track to meet its employment goal at the South Buffalo factory to avoid a $41.2 million penalty. This factory had 1,536 full-time jobs at its South Park Ave factory on November 10th with 21 part-time positions. Now, the way that $41 million penalty would have worked would be based on the headcount as of December 31st. So in November, they were good, and we would assume that through the end of the year, they will keep that employment count met. With this requirement, it does not include any provisions on the type of job or how much they pay. And the main work being done at Giga New York is the construction of electronic components for superchargers and inverters for some battery products. They also do some data annotation for autopilot and full self-driving, some lower level entry type jobs. Some great news here as Tesla Scope shared that the first Model 3 and Y vehicles with the new MCU3 infotainment AMD Ryzen chip are being produced and delivered in North America. This started in Shanghai and now we get confirmation it's coming to the States as new vehicle builds, very new however, sometime in the last week or two are now being built with the new chip. So what does this mean? Well, at a simple level, much faster infotainment navigation, a snappier system, and it will use less energy. Tesla Scope also reporting that these new Model 3 and Y vehicles, because yes, the S and X have already had this, are now including the 12 volt lithium ion battery. We heard a few weeks ago that new York was set to buy some Teslas for its fleet, but they are continuing this party. The city of New York is looking to invest $420 million in EVs, charging infrastructure and alternative fuels to accelerate the transition to an all electric municipal vehicle fleet. They're looking to do this by 2035, which is five years accelerated from the previous target of 2040. And it's said to be the most aggressive fleet electrification target in the country, as they have over 30,000 vehicles in its fleet and they're looking to start with 1,250 next year alone. And over the next 18 months, they're looking to transition all vehicles operated by senior city officials to be exclusively electric by June 30th, 2023. And only specialized emergency trucks like fire engines will be allowed to maintain the original 2040 target date for electrification if suitable replacement models are not yet available on the market. Sadly, here we get an anecdote that it's not just Ford raking their customers through the dealerships over the coals, but it's Mercedes as well. John Redinger saying he was gonna grab a Mercedes EQS 580, even had one ready for pickup. The dealer called to inform him there was a $50,000 markup on the car, he passed, and then as a follow-up, he emailed corporate to let them know what was going on, and this was their response. Thanks for the follow-up. I'm afraid there's not much we from the corporate side can do here. Pricing is completely up to the dealer. We are legally not allowed to intervene. There's extremely limited supply initially. We are certainly not endorsing this premium, but not up to us. I certainly believe the car is worth it. <laughs> it's crazy, man. So look, if you can't clearly see that the traditional system is inherently wildly flawed and outdated and ready for disruption, then I'm just not sure what you're looking at. This type of thing is just not okay and I can't believe that they just get away with it and more people aren't in an uproar trying to get these dealership protection laws abolished and out of the way because they're not protecting anybody but the dealerships themselves. They are definitely not protecting the consumer. From Alex on Twitter, German retail chain Globus to equip all 51 hyperstores with Tesla superchargers. All of our 51 Globus stores can be equipped with superchargers within the next three years. And the Globus hypermarket is a German retail chain of hypermarkets, DIY stores, and electronics stores. A pretty cool Tesla fun fact here. Yes, this was from the Lex and Elon conversation. Elon said that Ashok was the head of autopilot engineering and too many people are giving Elon and Andre too much of the credit. There's just such a team of highly specialized, talented people, Ashok being one of them. But Elon tweeted today that Ashok was the first person recruited from his tweet saying that Tesla is starting an autopilot team. That was back November 19th, 2015. So the first person recruited turns out to be now the head of the autopilot engineering team. And Elon said, wow, working on this problem has soaked up a lot of my time in brain cycles over the past seven years. This and Starship engines are currently the two hardest problem. And I wanna take a second to mention what Bilal said on Twitter. Tesla finally became an audiophile's dream car with 192 kilohertz, 24-bit, 
lossless streaming via USB, and the addition of Tidal Hi-Fi or High Fidelity, and now subwoofer options with software V11. Fantastic sound, thank you Elon. Now I'm personally not an audiophile, as I know there are definitely levels to this game. However, I really do love music, and growing up I always wanted a sound system in my car, and I just really think that the sound system and the experience and music and whatever someone is listening to in their car can create an experience and an enjoyment of ownership that should not be overlooked and the fact that Tesla has now become one of the best sounding cars, at least from everything that I am reading, it is very encouraging. And even the last time that I was in a Tesla driving it, it's probably been around two years, it was still an awesome sound system back then and I know it's only improved since that time. And Zach said that he tried Tidal for the first time in a refresh Model S with the active noise canceling on and he was very impressed. But some clarity on how you can actually access these high fidelity songs. Somebody said, apparently the high end bitrate is not available while streaming, can someone confirm? TJ said, confirmed, you need to download the song and it will then show with a hi-fi next to it. And David said, actually, if you connect your phone's hotspot, the hi-fi icon will appear when streaming. So some things to try out, but the clear solution would be using a USB stick, downloading the actual songs with a FLAC file or a free lossless audio codec. By the way, if you would like to learn more about FLAC files and how to use them, I will include this link in the description below. And back to Bilal, he says, no special settings needed. If you own lossless high fidelity music, just copy that to a USB drive and plug it into your Tesla or you can just subscribe to Tidal because Tidal is now offering streaming some of these high fidelity songs. They have lossless hi-fi tracks that play in high fidelity on Teslas. And he said that Tidal does sound better than Spotify, but 192 kilohertz FLAC files via USB sound the best. He's been told that Tesla Tidal app plays hi-fi quality when tracks are downloaded first, not via streaming. And a note on Waymo, they have partnered with Geely to basically put their Waymo driver and incorporate it into to Geely's new passenger first ride hailing vehicle. Waymo said they will integrate the Waymo driver into a version of the new mobility focused all electric Zeker vehicle designed in Sweden, specially for autonomous ride hailing. And they are looking to deploy these electric ride hailing vehicles in the US. They said our Waymo one riders will one day experience an interior without steering wheel and pedals and with plenty of headroom, legroom, reclining seats, screens, and chargers within an arm's reach and an easy to configure and comfortable vehicle cabin. But back to reality, they say, we'll begin to introduce these vehicles on US roads within our Waymo One fleet in the years to come. No specific date, it seems like it's still a ways away. But I'd like to leave you guys today with an encouraging clip as Elon has won over an unexpected new raving fan. So enjoy that. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a great day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. Forbes Net uh, now estimates uh, his net worth. Musk got about $279 billion. I, all I can take, Kayla, just to not go, I think I have, I, I, I haven't prevented it, to go full fanboy. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't. He's 50 years old. He sold his first video game um, that he designed writing code when he was 12 years old, 50 now, and just it's so fearless and so unwoke. And I, I, I don't know. I have, I, I'm a fanboy. I, I'm sorry. I am. I admit it. Is that, is that wrong? If loving there, him, you said it. If you said him, it. <laughs> if loving him is wrong, I don't want to be right. You don't want to be right? No, I can't. <laughs> I, I've, I've, I've tried not yeah. to, and I just given myself to it now. Unbelievable, 280 billion. Well, I think that you have the you have the benefit of being able to commentate on his moves rather than you know, being an investor in perhaps the the roller coaster stomach clutches of these companies. Investors certainly have gotten their returns, but it's not come without heartburn over the years, where he you know, has his Twitter trigger finger talking about potential bankruptcies in his companies and he's crazy uh, and he's various smoked, other things that I pot on the air. I mean, he's crazy. He. <laughs> He's on Saturday Night Live. I also love him because he, he's, you know, called like, sort of conceited. Maybe I'm Aspie, Asperger's, and, you know, I have a lot of affinity for, for those people. So um, I just I think he's awesome.